the number one loanout to raise your KD in Call Duty Cold War. Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we're really gonna go in depth as to why this thing is designed to number one, give a hyper-aggressive playstyle, number two, become undetectable in whatever action you perform, number three, enhance your detection skills, number four, get a high score, thus high lethal score streaks, and number five, keep you alive. It's not gonna matter what kind of game mode that you're playing, Team Deathmatch, Domination, Search and Destroy, as this loadout is gonna work for all of them. But also keep in mind that the game footage that you're about to see is with myself being solo as well as with teammates. And so once again, this is also showing you that it's a universal loadout. To really find out how this loadout can increase your KD, the only thing we have to do is just to simply sit back, relax, grab a break of that KitKat bar, eviscerate that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's jump right into the video. Before we go any further, you're going to witness some game footage using the MP5, the AK-47, and the FFAR. And within all these games, you're going to be seeing some 5.5 KDs, some 8.2 KDs, and even some 3.9 KD games. Clearly, this little definitely works, but it all hinges on one perk, or rather a wild card called Perk Greed. Perk Greed states that one can equip an extra perk for each and every single perk category. That right there is spectacular and glorious and wondrous in so many ways that I can't even begin to describe to you as to how amazing that actually is. Starting this off is our first column of two perks called Engineer and Forward Intel. Engineer states that one can detect enemy equipment and score streaks through walls, see enemy score streaks on the minimap, and reroll your care packages. The second one is Forward Intel, and it states that one can see indicators for enemy reinforcements on your minimap, and your minimap shows larger areas. As you're going from engagement to engagement, I can't tell you how many sneak little munchkins place a proximity mine or a smoke bomb or something else along those lines and then poof, adios, bye bye I'm dead. Engineer completely nullifies those things entirely and it's fantastic and not just to keep you alive, but also to keep the flow of your hyper-aggressive playstyle. The second thing that I want to point out here is forward intel. The main thing about this is that the minimap is actually going to be larger. Having a larger area on your minimap is essential to make this playstyle work, and that's because it's going to allow you to make a decision faster to then be able to make the right choices to thus get more kills and thus increase that score streak. Remember, the whole objective here is to have a longer lifespan, thus gain more score streaks, and thus also gain a very high KD. The next two perks to make this entire build work is Assassin and Scavenger. Assassin states that enemies which appear on your minimap when shooting or revealed by a spy plane will have a crosshair in a care instead of a red dot if they are on a kill streak. You then receive extra score for taking them down. Next up, we got Scavenger, and Scavenger states that one can replenish ammo from fallen enemies. I can't tell you how many times that I've had these incredibly long lifespans, but then all of a sudden I find myself without ammo and I'm like, oh crap, here we go again. I gotta go find somebody, use their weapon, and it completely flows out the rhythm of the hyper-aggressive playstyle with the weapon that I'm using. Now, don't worry, we're going to get into the weapons and, more importantly, the attachments in which you should be using all those weapons in just a few seconds. But before that, understand that having Scavenger is going to fix this ammo problem, no problem piece of cake, and Assassin is going to allow you to increase that score streak, getting more lethal score streaks, and thus increasing that KD, because those things are going to give you lots and lots of kills, and you want that, I want that, we all want that, it's a win-win-win. FYI, when you happen to get that Veto Escort, enemy players are going to become a little bit salty. But in order to have that happen, you got to have on two more perks in the third column to be either Ghost and Ninja. Ghost states that one becomes undetectable by enemy spy planes when you are moving, planting or defusing bombs, and or controlling score streaks. And suing this is Ninja, and Ninja states that one sprints more quietly while being resistant to field mics when sprinting. Essentially what these two perks are going to do is make you become a sneaky little munchkin just like Chucky saying surprise, gotcha! Before they even know what hit them, enemy players are going to be absolutely annihilate, decimate, and eradicate in a split second because number one, they're not going to hear you coming because your footsteps are so silent, and number two, they're not going to see you coming because your radar is going to be completely null and void via these two perks. Now of course, when we go into engagement to engagement to engagement, we're probably going to take down a little bit of damage as we go. And so to regen that health instantaneously, I absolutely must recommend that you use a stim shot. A stim shot is going to be a reusable stimulant that initiates healing immediately. Again, I can't tell you how many times that this thing saved my bacon as I've gotten two kills, done the stim shot, gotten the next two kills, and just like that, you got a fury kill, piece of cake. Now every now and then, you're going to have that one player that's just in the most ideal camping spot and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't get this guy really getting me, he's getting my nerves, 
And so instead, what you're going to do is you're going to toss a lethal equipment, aka a Semtex grenade. A Semtex is a lethal type of grenade that contains C4, which sticks to surfaces it touches, including players, before it explodes. The situation that I just described is going to be taken care of just like that in an instant, and that guardian who's camping in a corner or in that most ideal sniper spot is going to be gone in a flash, and it's going to be such a gratifying feeling onto that Semtex grenade, and you're going to say, thank you, check please, come again. As far as the equipment goes, the only thing that we haven't covered here is the field upgrade, and I want you to have on a field mic. The field mic is going to be a recording device that highlights enemy sounds within a certain radius on your mini-map. Whenever you can get more information from your mini-map is exactly what you want to have, and the field mic is going to do exactly this. It's going to tell you via sound if an enemy grinds in that proximity of the field mic, as well as show up on your mini-map having a nice little red dot appear within that space. The way in which I look at it is that I'm trying to get as much information as possible from that mini-map, so then I can have the best ideal choice, aka decision-making process, to take out that Guardian and the next one and the next one, so then I get those amazing score streaks. Before we get into those score streaks, I want to take one step back and analyze the attachments that I'm using on this MP5, the AK-47, and the FFAR that you've been seeing through this entire game footage so far. There's really only five attachments in general that you need to have, and that's either going to include a silencer or a suppressor, a grip, a speed mag or a fast mag, some kind of wrap, as well as some kind of stock. In short, the silencer or the suppressor is going to make sure that whenever you fire your weapon, you're never ever going to show up on radar, once again becoming undetectable. This is an absolute must-have if you want to be able to get these crazy high score streaks and crazy high KDs, because let's put it this way, whenever you fire your weapon, you're going to be showing off on the radar and people are going to know exactly where you are all the time. You don't want that, I don't want that, nobody wants that. So just put on a silencer and a suppressor and save your bacon from being stolen by the enemy team. Next up is the grip. And the whole point of the grip is to make sure that you're going to increase the weapon's consistency, aka accuracy, via horizontal recoil control and vertical recoil control respectively. After that is the speed mag or the fast mag. And I have to tell you, you've got to have on a fast reloading perk here, because if you don't, you're never ever going to be able to get those fury kills and frenzy kills and potentially team wipes. And I'm telling you when that happens, it's going to be such a gratifying feeling that enemy players are going to be like, what the heck is going on? How did this guy just wreck me? You know when they talk over the mic after they get a death and like, what the? Yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. That's going to happen on a fairly regular basis with this speed mag and fast mag. Ensuing this is a wrap. And the reason why I want you to have the wrap is because, again, we're trying to focus on a hyper-aggressive playstyle, getting lots of kills and lots of score streaks. And the best way in which this wrap's then going to do that is by increasing the flinch that you have, as well as the ADS speed of the weapon that you're using. Lastly, we come to the stock. And the stock is also essential to have because number one, it's going to increase your strafe speed, which is essential to dodge bullets, and number two, increase the sprint to fire time. Think about it like this. When you're playing hyper-aggressive, you want to have a very fast sprint to fire time, a very fast ADS speed, you also don't want to show up by the enemy spy planes, and so on and so forth, and running is going to be incorporated within all these things, within these attachments, as well as these perks in this build. If you're going from engagement to engagement to engagement in this manner, I guarantee you that you're going to get some crazy, crazy high kill games, along with some insane kill deaths, not just to be 8.0, 9.0, and 10.0 KD games, but also having some out of this world kill numbers at 50 kills, and that's just insane, especially for a game of team deathmatch. Now, what supplements this even more so is a couple of kill streaks and or score streaks. And the best way in which I can really describe this to you is to run really one of two attack score streaks or support score streak setups. If you find yourself not getting quite as many kills or quite as many points initially, then I recommend using the cruise missile, the attack helicopter, and the VTOL escort. With these types of score streaks, one's going to help you get to the next. That's exactly what you're trying to do along with the weapon. But also keep in mind that you want to have some score streaks that aren't going to take out too much of your time, disrupting the flow of the hyper-aggressive playstyle. In this sense, that's why you want to use the cruise missile and the attack helicopter to get you to that VTOL escort, because once you have that, oh my gosh, that thing just absolutely decimates everyone in the playing field. And let's be honest, you're adding in some spicy, crispy, juicy seasoning to put that salt in the wound, and it's a gratifying feeling. Now, if you find yourself getting the hang of this playstyle significantly more so, then by all means, feel free to go ahead and change out the cruise missile for the chopper gunner, and once this is the case, oh baby, things are going to get real hot and real crispy to making that stew so delicious, but I digress. Now, if that's not your cup of tea with the attack score streaks, maybe something that is more so your cup of tea is the support score streaks, because here, 
you want to have either a spy plane, a counter spy plane, an attack helicopter, and a harp, or rather a combination of those things. Again, if you're finding a little difficulty with the score streaks that you're trying to get, then by all means, use a spy plane, a counter spy plane, and then an attack helicopter. The reason why I want you to use this setup is because number one, all three of these score streaks are going to be very, very easy to proc. Is all you simply gotta do is hit right on the D-pad and then poof, just like that, they're used in an instant. This is going to allow you to have the ebb and flow of the hyper-aggressive playstyle in perfect synergy. But if you happen to find yourself getting a ton of kills and a ton of overall score streaks, maybe what you want to use instead is a spy plane, an attack helicopter, and a harp. I can't tell you how many times that that harp is almost better than any kind of attack score streak in general because that harp tells you the exact precise locations of enemy players and it's beautiful because it allows you to get some crazy more score streaks rocking those other two score streaks that you got from before, the spy plane and the attack helicopter, that much more frequently. There's been many, many times where I've done just this, and people are like, what the heck? This is some fluff cabbage trash shenanigans, and I'm like, no, no, no. This is the number one best loadout in the entire game to play in a hyper-aggressive playstyle and get those crazy high KDs and amazing score streaks all together. So let me ask you this, what do you guys think? Have you tried the loadout for yourself? If so, then by all means, Tell me what you guys think down in the comment section below. And no matter what you guys say, you always know that I'm going to respect your opinions, and that is something that I can guarantee. That's pretty much all I've got for you for right now, DS Layers. And so, as always, GG TNT.